really get an idea of how steep the bank is when you're watching on telly. It's not a bank, it's a wall. Here comes Libby. Fancy a race? I'd really like to, but um, I haven't got the right shorts. <laughs> Luckily, we're here to test our fitness trackers, not compete with each other. And because I need all the help I can get, I'm sporting the biggest name in fitness tracking, Fitbit. This is the Charge 5. Well, I've got a much cheaper band from Xiaomi, costing just $39.99. But whose has the better spec? So, Libby, my Fitbit can measure O2 sets and heart rate. Me too! Water resistant to 50 metres. Same here. Yeah, that as well. 20 exercise modes, Libby. 30. Did she say 30? I've got smart notifications on mine. Mine has two. Seven days between charges. 14. <laughs> yeah, what about built-in GPS? Mine doesn't have that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Doctor, get in. Right, I'm glad I finally caught you out with one. Oh, one yes. second, I've got a message, because, you see, mine can receive texts. Yes, yeah, so does mine. Oh, right. <clears throat> anyway, it says, test the accuracy of the band's location tracking. <laughs> I've got GPS, you see. Advantage me. <laughs> Precise location tracking is crucial for fitness bands, so they can accurately measure your workout. So we're going to test ours by going for a ride around the arena. Earlier, I did a quick recce with my trusty measuring wheel and I've planned a 10-lap route, which will total 3.65 kilometres. Then we'll check the distance on our bands to see which is most accurate. And while my Xiaomi doesn't have GPS, it may not be as big a problem as Otis thinks. My watch is going to be linked to my phone and I wouldn't go anywhere really without my phone, so it's not really an issue. OK, fair enough. Well, it may not be an issue for you, Libby, but on a long run in hot weather, I'm not sure I'd fancy lugging my phone around. That is windy. Our ride gives us a chance to get to know our fitness band a bit better, starting with screen quality. My Fitbit 5 has a 1.04-inch full-colour AMOLED screen. So I've got a very clear readout on mine, Libby, nice and bright, easily viewable while I'm cycling. It gets even brighter when I raise it to view. How's yours? So my screen isn't even on, so I'm hoping that it's sending all the information back to my phone. Are you getting any feedback at all? I'm getting some vibrations. Some vibes. Some good vibes, I hope. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Was my Xiaomi having a slight malfunction, or had I put it in the wrong mode? No pedalling required at all. <laughs> no. Just getting carried along by the wind here. I wonder if it's saying, though, that we're doing the calories for it. <laughs> <laughs> With the elements giving us a helping hand some of the way, we were soon in sight of the finish line. Here we are. And ready to see which fitness tracker was most accurate. Ten laps. Cold and wet and windy ones. Hold on, I'm trying to unclip. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> we can't stop. <laughs> as well as displaying distance, data syncs with the Fitbit app and overlays our ride onto a map. However, Despite us riding the same route I'd planned, my Fitbit said we'd done 3.83 kilometres, about 200 metres further than the measured distance of 3.65. What did you get? Mine says I got 3.06, so okay. I'm about 600 metres out. Under, okay. Which isn't, you know, which isn't great. It's not, is it? So I'm going to have to take victory in this one. I think that's fair enough. OK, should we get inside? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> So, with a more accurate measure of distance, it's 1-0 to my Fitbit. But don't get ahead of yourself, Otis, because next we're heading to the gym for challenge two. Ah, Libby, the old, yeah, once upon a time. Well, do, do you I, I fancy it, go. Yeah, do you? I don't right, mind a bit of boxing. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> You're going to have to hold on a minute. Build up a sweat to test how comfortable your fitness bands are. Fitness bands are designed to be worn 24-7 and deal with sweaty workouts. So, to avoid skin rashes and irritation, a comfortable fit and quality materials are imperative. You ready to get a bit of a sweat on? Yes, I am, but I'm just going to check my daily readiness because that will tell me whether I'm truly ready. The Fitbit readiness score claims to measure how ready you are for exercise, giving you a score out of 100. I have something similar on my watch called PAI. Right. 
PAI or personal activity intelligence gives you points for an activity and the aim is to hit a score of 100. Mine's free, you have to pay for yours don't yeah, you? Yeah I do. Well for the first six months it's free and then I've got to pay 7 99 because it's part of the premium package and it's actually telling me that I have really low readiness so can I go put my feet up? No, come on. All right. Let's give it a go. All right, go on in. You start. To build up an accurate picture of our vital stats, we've been wearing our trackers for a few days, so now have baselines for resting heart rate, sleep patterns, and typical exercise regimes. It's my knuckle split. There, is it? It's like carpet burns, <laughs> eh? And when you're wearing them all the time, it's important that they're really comfortable and don't snag on things or get in the way. My Fitbit weighs 28 grams and it comes in three colours. This is steel blue. It's got a stainless steel case and the design is very smooth and streamlined. My Xiaomi's slim silicon band comes in six colours and weighs less than half as much as a Fitbit. Ah, ah, I've forgotten how much I hate these. Um, so, in terms of comfort, how does yours feel? Mine's really comfortable. It feels really light and it's not getting in the way of belly notes even there. OK. I'm only aware that I'm wearing mine because I've tightened it a little bit so it doesn't move up and down. So other than it being a bit firm, I don't really notice that it's there either. But what I've noticed with ones I've tested in the past is my skin does get a bit itchy after a while. So we'll see what happens with this one. So at this stage, Libby, we've had the watches for a while. I'm still finding it quite comfortable. There's no itch. It doesn't feel like it's squeezing or anything like that. How does yours feel? Mine feels great. Like, no, no issues at all. Both fitness bands did what they were supposed to, so we called it a draw and took a point apiece. That makes the score 2-1 to my Fitbit. But still to come, we find out who's the overall winner when we test our heart rate monitors. <sighs> Having put our fitness bands through their paces to test the accuracy of their GPS tracking... I'm hoping that it's sending all the information back to my phone. It was, but sadly not as accurately as Otis's Fitbit, which won round one. And when we gave them a sweaty workout in round two to test comfort... I've forgotten how much I hate these. They were both in good shape, unlike me. <sighs> which means it's 2-1 to Otis's Fitbit, with one challenge to go. Oh, Libby, there's something down here. Right, it says, test the accuracy of your fitness band's heart rate monitors. How are we going to do that? Bleep test. What's one of them? In this bleep test, we have to run between cones set 15 metres apart and make it back before the next bleep. Each level gets faster, and when you don't beat the bleep, you're out. The point of all this pain is to get our hearts pumping to test the accuracy of our heart rate monitors. It's that data that these trackers use to help us train more effectively. Both bands use optical heart rate monitoring, which detects a pulse by measuring how much light is absorbed by the blood vessels in the skin. So to find out which was most accurate, we each strapped on professional heart rate monitors. And a team of experts standing by to prove how accurate and scientific the data is. OK, right. Three, two, one. When you start doing hard exercise, your heart rate goes up rapidly. Fitness trackers often lag behind pro devices, such as electrical chest sensors, which can react quicker to these sudden changes. Start of level three. Oh! <laughs> I haven't run since Tokyo! When we get to the end of the test, we'll compare the two sets of results and find out which tracker matches the electrical monitoring more closely. Level five. Oh, my gosh! <laughs> oh, God. Level seven. Oh. I was beaten on level seven, but Start Otis was looking good. Eight. Keep going! <laughs> level <laughs> ten. <laughs> ah, I'm done. <laughs> now I know why it's really called a bleep test. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at the data. <sighs> Dr Joel Chidley is a physiologist from the University of Derby, so when it comes to heart rates, he knows what he's talking about. Joel, can you tell me the difference between my data and your data? 
It looks pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. I mean, they're starting around a similar similar point at rest. And as you can see from our data, as you start exercising, you get a rapid increase. It then increases more gradually as the task becomes more difficult. Okay. On the data from your watch, it takes a little time to catch up. Okay. A more gradual increase. And then it pretty much undershoots the rest of the way. Right. So the average heart rate you've got on your from your watch is 127 beats per minute whereas we have your average is 150 Ooh. and your maximum on here is 150 and we have your maximum as 168. So my Fitbit shows a bit of a lag compared to the professional heart rate monitor but it wasn't way out. What about Libby's Xiaomi? So how does my data compare to yours? Well, as you can see at the start, when you were resting, it's hovering around 90 on both of the outputs. But as soon as you start exercise on our display, heart rate increases rapidly to meet the demands of exercise. Whilst on your phone, yeah. from the recording on your watch, the heart rate doesn't really move. There's a little bit of a wiggle. <laughs> it shows absolutely no change at all. No. <laughs> our maximum heart rate we see is 185. You've got 97. Oh dear. And our average for the whole activity, 165, and you've got 88. That is a huge difference. It is, Massive it difference. is a difference. And really important if you're trying to track your fitness, if it's not relaying what's going on or anything like what's going on. No, no it's, as soon as you've started moving, it's, it's had a bit of a meltdown. The Fitbit was closer to the professional heart rate monitor and is the clear winner of challenge three. I guess the moral of that story is you get what you pay for it. In this challenge, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm really surprised at how poorly my Xiaomi performed. It wasn't good at all, was no, it? No, not at all. Well, you wouldn't be using that for cycling training, would you? <laughs> when is your next competition? I've got the Cycling World Championships in October, and I definitely won't be using it as a part of my training. <laughs>